Welcome back to another edition of This Week in the XFL. I'm your host, the referee from XFL2K.com, the number one source to get all your XFL news. So what do we go, got going on this week? Well, there's a couple big items that we're going to talk about. So it looks like the He Hate Me trademark may be coming back. There's some action going there. Uh, we have a new member coming to the site that's actually going to be covering the Summer Showcase out in Dallas, uh, which is actually happening today. Uh, not the day I'm recording it, but the day that it's airing. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that. And then uh, we'll kind of go into the Summer Showcase in general. And then we'll talk about all of the latest hires with uh, which you can stay up to date with with the XFL 2K staff tracker link down in the description. So you know what? Let's kick this off. Everybody remembers he hate me. If you love the old XFL, if you hated the old XFL, people know the name he hate me. And it looks like the XFL realizes that. Uh, and, and, you know, it looks like they're actually aggressively, well, not aggressively, but they're actively trying to pursue the trademark for He Hate Me when what it looks like it is in relation to merchandise. So think uh, retro jerseys, things of that nature, which please sign me up. I would be down for that. So Josh Gerben Esquire, uh, he's a trademark attorney. He posted a little bit of a video on his website, uh, which w I'll drop a link to down in the description here as well where he kind of talks about the situation. Uh, you know, he said the one thing he found interesting about the uh, about the whole thing is how the US PTO, the trademark office, reacted when they reviewed the application from the XFL. Uh, basically, they found that He Hate Me was a nickname for a living individual, which as you know, or you should know, is Rod Smart, former running back of the Las Vegas Outlaws. Uh, when they uh, and basically, they, they requested consent from Rod Smart of the XFL. Uh, and in response, they said that Rod Smart is, is not going to really be a part of this whole thing. So there is still a little bit of back and forth going there. Uh, I don't know how much traction is going to come out of this. But, hey, I'm all for retro merchandise. Now, I know there are some... Uh, there are different vendors online that sell them. Uh, I think 503sports.com, they, they sell retro XFL jerseys. So I'm curious how all of that works, uh, but it looks like the XFL is at least trying to get that He Hate Me trademark, which again, they've held for a while now. They're just trying to make sure they keep it. Uh, and it sounds like in order to keep that trademark, they need to release some type of merchandise clothing in, in particular to to register that trademark so it, it sounds like we may be getting that sooner rather than later and again this if this falls apart then hey we may not um so you know before we get into the summer showcase let's do our weekly recap of all the latest tires we're going to go over the staff tracker list here uh and again alphabetical order of the team so no particular orders here, but we're going to start with Dallas. We have Jarrell Jackson as the wide receivers coach, For, former Sooner. He knows uh, Bob Stoops very well, so I, I think that's a good pickup. We have J Jim Jeffcoat as the defensive line coach, former first-round pick for the Dallas Cowboys. So, again, keeping these people lo local, 23rd pick overall, 1983. And most recently, the defensive line coach for the Orlando Apollos as you should know the number one team at the time of the AAF's folding. So that's good to see. And another Apollo coming on board and a name you're probably familiar with, Spurrier. But not Steve Spurrier. It is his son, Scott Spurrier, as the quality control assistant. Uh, and, you know, he was the tight ends coach for the Apollos. Again, bringing these people in. It's nice to see the AAF, AAF guys come through to the XFL, especially... A lot of those Apollos guys, real good team. I, I think that's going to pay dividends. So moving to our home turf here, Houston, we have two announcements. We have Chris Miller as the offensive coordinator and the quarterback coach, dual role there. So he played for the NFL for 10 seasons. His best season being with the Falcons where he threw over 3,000 yards and 26 touchdowns. That's what I like to see in an offensive coordinator, a guy that knows how to score some points. Now we're moving on down to the defensive side. Defensive coordinator, 
Tom Mason, a guy, again, that knows June Jones from his time at SMU. Uh, and he was also in, in the AAF as well as linebackers coach for the Memphis Express. And this is our first returning XFL coach from the original XFL. So Tom Mason was also the linebackers coach for the Las Vegas Outlaws. So we're starting to see some of these older XFL names come into the new league with a much bigger mix of other names in the league as well. So this is very promising is what I like to see. So moving over to the West Coast, further west at least, we have Los Angeles with Pepper Johnson as the defensive quarterback. Uh, most recently, the linebackers coach for the Memphis Express, another AAF guys, 13-year NFL vet, two Super Bowl rings, sign him up. Moving over to New York, Gerald Ingram is the running back coach. Coach for Ball State, Boston College, the Jaguars, the Giants, his resume looking pretty good, so another good pickup for Moss and company. Uh, here we are in Seattle. This one just broke the other day. This is probably one of the brighter, bigger names on this list, but former coach of the San Antonio Commanders is joining XFL Seattle as the offensive coordinator. Now, Mike Riley, th this is pretty impressive. He's not only coached in the AAF, and he's not only about to coach in the XFL, but he's also coached in the NCAA, the CFL, the NFL, and the NFL Europe. Boom, sign them up, let's add to that resume, let's put that XFL right on there, and let's make this the winning one, you know, at least until we get to the championship game uh, or wherever you play Houston and we beat you. We'll, we'll see. So we have a team president announcement, the only one of the group here, uh, Tampa Bay, Josh Bullock, team president, former uh, USF employee and VP of the Tampa Bay Rays. That's a good name. And, you know, they had an interview with him and he, he had mentioned, you know, this opportunity doesn't come often. So he was more than glad to kind of test the water with the XFL, see what he can make happen down there in Tampa Bay. And so we're going to cap it off with DC. They got four different guys here. So we have Bob Saunders as the wide receiver's assistants. These are all assistants here. Uh, you know, he was the offensive assistant for the Chief, the Redskins, and the Rams, St. Louis Rams. Uh, Christopher Skeflo, offensive line assistant. He was the OL coach and the run game coordinator for the Arizona Hotshots. Another AAF guy coming on over. Kurt Kavea as the lineback assistant. And if the name sounds familiar, this is another former XFL guy. Uh, guy, not Guile, Ew. Ew. Uh, but he also played for the Las Vegas Outlaws, uh, and he also spent time with the Redskins, the Eagles, and the Chargers. Uh, and then we have Sigmondo Kiofi as the uh, DB assistant, and he spent some time with the Browns and the Cardinals. So that's who we have this week, at least at the time of the recording. This is Thursday afternoon, so there may be a couple names that squeak through. But uh, I figure we'll kind of go a, a little bit of a recap of the Summer Showcase. Uh, considering the first event starts today, Friday, in Dallas. Uh, and then the second event is in tomorrow, Saturday, in Houston, which we will be attending. We will get all sorts of footage. Uh, and I'm actually going to run the drills. And I, I think we're going to prove how out of shape I actually am. Uh, but all of this action you'll be able to see next week on This Week in the XFL. Uh, but we also have an announcement to make, too. We've hired uh, a new member of the XFL 2K team who's going to be covering the event in Dallas for us. So we're going to welcome XFL Plus, uh, which we mentioned him last week on our shout-out uh, episode. And we, we started having some dialogue over Twitter. And you know what? I needed some writers. I needed some extra hands. And this dude is more than capable. So he's a fan of the original XFL as well as the new XFL. He watched all of the games during their only season in uh, 2001. Uh, but again, you should check out his, his Twitter account, at XFL Plus. He posts a good mix of different reviews. He kind of sifts through all of the garbage so you don't have to. And hey, you know you're going to see a couple of my articles in there. So sign him up and sign you up while you're at it. Uh, so keep an eye on uh, my I'm on Facebook and Twitter as well as at XFL Plus on Twitter 
for all the latest updates from both the summer showcases. Uh, we're going to be posting a couple articles both on Friday and Saturday covering both of the, the events. So make sure you check out XFL2K.com for all the latest news and updates. Uh, but let's go over some of the, uh, the the summer showcase details. I think we have a little bit more information since you know we last spoke about this. Uh, so these events are not really tryouts. They're, they're really workouts. All of the people that are going to be at these events. So again, there's 800 plus attendees that, that, that's gonna be at all of these events spread out, roughly about 100 per event. Uh, but these are folks that the XFL is already interested in signing. These are not guys that they necessarily want to watch work out or they need to prove themselves. They've already kind of proven themselves. These are so the coaches and the staffs can get a good eye for what they can do to see how they add and pick up these folks during the draft, right? So all eight team staffs will be at every showcase. Now, not necessarily all of the coaches, but there will be staff members at each one of these events. So scouts, assistants, things of that nature. Uh, so every showcase is gonna be comprised of two teams, uh, both offense and defense, 50 players each that are gonna be able to run drills, do practice games, things like that. Uh, and beyond your typical combine things like your 40 yard dash and, and the long jump, you know, things like that. They're also adding the X factor test, which we don't have much information on, but we will soon. Shortly after this video is posted, details are going to start coming out on our social media and xfl2k.com so we'll keep you in the loop as we know more uh and then you know the league's also gonna going to be using advanced metrics uh from like wearables right so different devices that the players are going to be wearing to monitor how they're playing out there and really to test how they're going to use this technology in a real life game scenario so you know, that's that's just a little recap. I know we're going to learn a lot more about this. So next week on This Week in the XFL, make sure you tune in because I'm going to have the scoop. I'm going to have the skinny. We're going to have all sorts of footage pending. The card doesn't corrupt on us this time, but we have multiple cameras. I have a couple different crews. I have a camera person. We have a crew in Dallas. Somehow we're going to get footage, we're going to get information, we're going to get images, and you are going to see me run the drills at the XFL Showcase again next week, right here on This Week in the XFL. So hey, before I let you go, if you didn't know, check us out on Facebook and Twitter at XFL2K.com, still trying to get that premium domain, no dot in there. Uh, but hey, one day, the answer is always yes. And since we're on YouTube, make sure you drop a like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell to see when we're dropping new videos. Some are going to be live and some are going to be pre-recorded just like this one. So until next time, ooh, sign you up. I've been watching you.